Hello, welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox Videos. Okay, this is something I'm going to address. As we've been asked this quite a few times, the people who have got strange knocking or tapping noises from their engine. Something that's not easy to diagnose because there could be one or two reasons that a tapping noise would occur. With a diesel engine, it tends to be noisy anyway because of the combustion process or the uh, diesel exploding in the cylinders and it is quite mechanically noisy. So to take the guesswork out of finding where a noise might be, using something like a mechanic stethoscope will help you diagnose a problem. The stethoscope itself has an acoustic chamber and a solid rod. It sends vibrations up the pipe into the earpiece, which, to be honest with you, is very, very accurate because where you put the rod is where the noise will be. Okay, so we've got the 300 TDI in here, and it does have a tapping noise. I can hear it when I'm driving. Now, if I push the revs up just slightly, you might be able to tune your ears in enough to realise there is a noise here. Now, it sounds like it's coming from the top because it's a light tapping noise. Other than stripping the engine down, we're going to have to try and locate the origin of the noise as close as possible. So, with this instrument here, I'm listening to the rocker cover. Now, you'll be surprised how accurate this instrument actually is. This is a bit of educated guessing, first of all, because you've got to find roughly where the origin of the noise might be before you can go in and isolate it a bit better. So, I'm thinking it might be the tappets are loose. I'm putting the rod on top or above where the rockers might well be. The process of diagnostics is more about a process of elimination. Find the stuff that's good and then cross it off the list and then move on to where you find the problem might be rather than just guessing and pulling things to bits. Components make noise. I'm now testing the lift pump which has a chamber on the top and it has actually got a tapping noise. Now I've put the rod straight on there, putting the revs up a little bit and listening to what happens to it. This could well be a weak spring in the lift pump. If you couldn't quite hear it, have another listen to that clip and see if you can hear the tap tap tap. Right, so we're running across the top of the rocker cover, and yes, I have found a distinct tapping noise, but I'm just making sure first that the tappets, or the rest of the tappets, are okay. So what we have is around about a number one, number two valve on the first cylinder that seems to be making a large tapping noise. Now I'm moving from one to the other, and the clip that you're about to hear, you'll hear the difference. to apologise about the little bit of wind in the audio, but here it is again with visual. The bonus with using a stethoscope is that not only can you check your engine for tapping noises, you can also check other casings for bearing rumbles and dodgy gears. So have this in mind next time you ask about a noisy component. Right, you can have hours of fun with a stethoscope and it's not an expensive tool. You're looking from £5 to about £15. So the investment is worthwhile, especially when you find that you have a noise that you can't locate from just standing there and listening to the engine. Get into it, because it will point you in the right direction. 
Okay, guys and girls, for the people that follow us quite regularly, here's a project update on our 110. Okay, we've done a fair bit of work and we put it through the MOT. You can see the advisories, a registration plate, oil leak, well, it's a Land Rover, and no problem there. And the rear seat, which was a bit gibberish, rear off, rear missing, unable to check seat belts. Well, to be honest with you, looking at the back of the vehicle, which we haven't paid much attention to, you have half a seat base and you have the buckles for or the buckle locks for the seat belts nothing else and this is about high time that we removed the seat out of here got rid of it put it in the skip the vehicle went into the mot station at 139,999 and he clocked up the mileage so he had a four mile road test and it came back with a diff locking with an MOT pass so we're happy days there and the price of it was £30 plus £5 for headlight adjustment which is pretty good value for money to be honest with you we did have a little bit of a rush because the tailpipe snapped off like so and this is a potential MOT failure so uh, you can see the rear silencer end the tailpipe and the rest of the exhaust system is not in the best of conditions so we decided to quickly chuck an exhaust on I went for the whole system although the tailpipe was the bit that was corroded and snapped rear silencer is ESR 2384 on the 110 and the center box is uh, ESR 2383 from Bearmark we made the decision to keep the catalytic converter in line. And part number is ESR 3495, which is downpipe with catalytic converter. We decided to keep the sensible route of having a catalytic converter in there and making sure that the emissions that come out of the vehicle are cleaner. Right, so the exhaust is easy enough to do. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's got flanges. It comes in three bits, so it can be bolted easy. However, the downpipe, um, it's very close to the alternator, so I'd recommend that you disconnect the battery when you remove the downpipe because just here is a live connection to battery which can spark out. The other bit of advice is don't use exhaust paste upstream of a catalytic converter because it makes a mess of them. Although we put new discs and pads on, but actually the disc was starting to get a little bit rusty. This doesn't help because the trip to the MOT station, we were allowed to go to the nearest MOT station since the ticket had run out in January. And this involved actually hard braking. However, the vehicle pulled up nice and square and passed the brake test. So that's happy motoring for another year. You can see by the mileage every year, this vehicle doesn't actually do too many miles. So we managed to clock up another 330 odd miles going to the greatest Land Rover show on earth. Bearmark used this vehicle as part of their stand display, but put against some of the vehicles that are actually on show. You can see here they are in bristing condition, so we've got a lot of work yet to do on the appearance of the vehicle. Um, perhaps not like the car and long nose here which is a little bit too excessive for our needs but this looks quite nice perhaps a four inch lift which would accommodate these tires would be a little bit out of our price range however it's nice to look but we're looking back at the uh, bear mark stand and on the bottom here there's plenty of toys they've got to uh, sell we can see a set of springs I'm not sure whether we want to drop it by an inch, keep it standard, or lift her up by plus one or plus two inches on the lift. However, we do have budget considerations here, so we don't want to spend too much money. But looking at this sort of example of paintwork, which is absolutely pristine, and interiors that would cost a small fortune, it's the sort of thing that only some of us can dream of. However, we're back to reality, services, maintenance, and repair of this Callanol girl. If you have any suggestions of what we might be able to do with the exterior and the interior, let us know or we're interested. Put it in the comments below on this video in YouTube. 